one. Now this happened a few days ago. I'm still suffering to this day from the apocalypse that happened on June 25th. Let's go back two weeks. I was eating poorly and generally being a dick to my own body about what I was eating. Mostly because school just ended and I was in that freedom fuck yeah phase of summer break. Now, I actually didn't even notice I wasn't pooping until June 22nd, when it became slightly difficult for me to pee, mainly because my belly has filled with shit to become the size of a basketball. Farting has long become a thing of the past, and I started having horrible stomach cramps. I was searching everywhere online for anything that could get me to pass a log, when I remembered all the reviews I read of these sugar-free gummy bears. Sadly, both the original and the Albanese ones are either removed or out of stock, so I had to use some other random one. But it still had sugar alcohol in it, so I bought a five-pound bag of it. The next morning, I was very glad to see it arrive exactly on schedule. So, I brought it home. And instead of eating breakfast, I indulged myself to eat as many of these hell bears as possible. Biggest mistake ever. Of my life. I had eaten about three pounds of these before I had to stop due to nausea, and then I continued the day as normal. In the morning, some low-pitched gurgles were occasionally emanated from my stomach, but I thought nothing much of it. I actually didn't eat lunch as I was too full from the fucking hell bears. Soon I was on a couch watching TV and before I knew it I was asleep. Yes, I'm a lazy person, okay? That was before I was awoken by the putrid smell of my farts. I looked pregnant with shit and my stomach sounded like a trumpet with extra gurgling added. I was farting about every 30 seconds, and I felt like if I didn't, I would literally explode. I was convinced it was a dream and tried to get myself to snap out of it. Sadly, it wasn't. Suddenly, I felt my rectum fill up with poop, and I knew that I have seconds to get to the bathroom before I explode. So I used every single bit of strength I had left in me to stop Niagara Falls from funneling through my butthole. I was using so much force, I fell over on my way to the bathroom. But luckily, I landed on my back. I stood back up, determined to make it to the bathroom, and kept walking to the bathroom. When I finally made it into the bathroom, the windows made a perfect angle to shine sunlight directly on the porcelain throne. Ah, like it was a gift from the gods. Unfortunately, what happened next was just unholy. I accidentally flipped open the toilet cap so hard that before I sat on it, it flipped back down onto the toilet seat. Now I sat on the toilet and realized my fatal error. But it was beyond the point of no return. The napalm resembling liquid diarrhea shot out of me so hard, I was convinced that I was slightly lifted off the toilet seat, and it splattered all over the bathroom walls. Meanwhile, I stood up and lifted the now shit-smeared toilet cap off, while simultaneously ejecting it 60 miles per hour towards the wall. When I sat on the toilet seat again, even though there was poop all over the back, I leaned back and unleashed the demon inside me. It felt less like Niagara Falls being funneled through me, and more like Mount Anus erupting endlessly. As I was shitting, my belly started deflating. But that wasn't of my attention at the time. I was perfectly glued to the toilet for what seemed like hours, being defeated by some synthetic sweeteners. The first wave was finished off by a fart so loud that it might have awakened Satan himself and reminded him that his demonic creations are working. It was only after I had finished shitting the first wave that the smell hit me. It was so strong I nearly fainted. And after, the smell will always be the worst of the trauma. That will remain at the back of my nose forever. It smelled like someone pickled a jar of rotten fish with essence of skunk, and then threw it into the toilet and left it there for five months. I was about to sum up the collateral damage done by my blasting when the second wave hit me, and just like the first wave, I slowly died on the toilet. Explosion by explosion of molten shit, 
This repeated a few times until I was crawling out of my bathroom, feeling completely empty, powerless, and dehydrated as fuck. Smaller waves still suddenly hit me every few hours, and I feel like I literally broke my bowels. The toilet was entirely clogged, and there was absolutely no way I was cleaning that myself. I do feel bad for the plumber I called in to declog everything. He probably got PTSD'd from that as well. Now I am writing this as a warning to any potential buyers. Do not eat sugar-free gummy bears, especially the off-brand ones. Only ever buy if you are either willing to go through an out-of-body experience, or face the wrath of the Geneva Convention when giving it to other people. I have already been traumatized by this enough, and I shall talk about it no further. 2. This story takes place about two years after my life-shattering divorce, when I was unsuccessfully attempting to cope with life through frequent drinking and random hookups. Luckily, I grew through that phase with time, luck, and lots and lots of deep introspection and self-accountability. Now, onto this strange and juicy fuck-up. As I mentioned, I had been in a rough patch for a few years at this point, and was letting loose in all the wrong ways. My best friend decided we needed a drunken getaway, and so we travelled to a nearby city full of alcohol, gambling, and, we hoped, fun women. Well, the night started out great with us pre-gaming a few shots in our hotel room to save money and wandering around the city bar hopping. Being a couple of semi-rowdy single man boys complete with the loud, overly enthusiastic drunken banter, bro hugs and I love you mans, it was no surprise we weren't finding any single women who wanted to hang with us. We ended up somewhere off the beaten path with neon lights and smoky casinos towards the end of the night. By this time, I was experiencing the world in small clips of wobbly tunnel vision, and was registering about a three on the amount of wits I had about me. I remember sitting at a small, mostly vacant bar, whose only patrons were people much darker than myself and my friend. Loud rap music was coming through the speakers, and I was feeling very out of place as a very white, former, okay, maybe current, emo kid from a small rural town. My friend and I were trying our best to make conversation about hip-hop music, which we know very little about, despite the bartender being courteous enough to put up with whatever we were stammering about. I could tell we weren't the typical crowd in that bar by the looks we were getting. We requested some of the only rap we listened to, and the bartender put it on. I started to feel a little more accepted as we continued to talk about the music with him, ignoring the stares from the others. My buddy left to go use the bathroom, and that's when I noticed a lonely-looking blonde woman at the bar a few seats over. Being drunk as fuck and full of courage, I ended up striking up a conversation with her. I quickly noted her accent, and we talked about her Russian ethnicity, and probably some other stuff I can't recall. My buddy has a fascination for all things Russian, so I decided I would introduce them and let them chit-chat while I drank some more. Pretty quickly, I heard the lady say, what happened to Tosit 666? I was talking to him. Apparently my plan didn't work and she was more interested in me. Luckily, my friend and I are always looking out for each other and will play wingman however it works out. He smiles at me and tells me to take his seat. The next undetermined amount of time goes by without me, and the next thing I know the three of us are walking back to... where? Oh, our hotel room. The Russian woman is hanging all over me somehow and buttoning up my jacket. She is being sweet as can be and way too loving for someone I just met in a bar. She pulls me to the side and tells me, I want to give this to you. I look down and notice she's holding a very small velvety box. It's a ring box. I laugh at her obvious drunkenness because even in my state I know that's ridiculous. I push it away and say, no, you keep it. We end up in the hotel room and we're taking off our jackets. She takes hers off and suddenly pulls a fucking hatchet from inside her pocket. My friend and I freeze in astonishment before she laughs it off and puts it down on the table. I think we talked about it being for her protection, but it's hazy. Flash forward to my next memory and we, me and the Russian girl, are in bed doing the dirty, while my friend sleeps in the next bed. It's great, we do all kinds of fun stuff, finish and lay there talking. It's nearly morning now. 
This is when things take a turn for the weird. She starts talking about how perfect I am, and how she is glad she finally found me, that she's been searching for me but didn't know it was me she was looking for until now. I awkwardly laugh it off and try to change the subject. To no avail. She gets above me and commands me to stare into her eyes. I try to oblige, but I'm feeling really weirded out now. She laughs and says, Do you feel it? I think, uh, not sure what is it. But it comes out as another nervous laugh and... Uh -huh. She talks about how she can see the whole world in her mind, sometimes. And a bunch of other really, really strange things that I'm not comprehending. It's hard for me to tell if it's a language barrier or if she's really crazy. I finalize my assessment of her mental state when she tells me that she sometimes grabs her cat and throws him against the wall for no reason. She's crazy. She wants to have sex again, but this time tells me, Make love to me. I'm feeling really unsure about all this and wish we could go back to sleep, but between her demanding my libido and the uncertainty of how to refuse without angering the crazy woman whose hatchet is lying on the nearby table, I comply, or attempt to. I finish and she seems very upset. I ask her if she's okay and she huffs. It's not what I thought it would be like. Oh, sorry? And we lay in silence till I finally decide to wake up my friend and tell him, We need to get going to that thing. He is blissfully unaware, thinking I scored big, all happy for me. I'm praying he hurries the hell up. While he gets ready, she tells me she doesn't like her roommates and asks if she can come with me. I say I live out of town and she replies with, Okay, can I live with you? I'm so confused and quite terrified of what this is turning into, so I refuse and make up some excuse. We finally get ready to leave and she hands my buddy her bloody hatchet. I want you to have this, she tells him. He refuses but she insists. She pulls out the little black ring box again. I want to give this to you, and hands it to me. I open the box and it's empty. She tells me it's very special and wants me to keep it. I refuse and hand it back. Before she can insist I keep the box, I rush us out the door into the car garage. She follows. When we get to the car, I have no choice but to ditch her and do it now, as I can tell she is trying to get in and come with us. I ask her where she is going and say goodbye before she can answer. Get in the car as fast as possible and rush my bewildered friend in as I'm practically driving away. The poor woman stood there staring at us as we drove off and I felt horrible, but it had to be done. I was not ready for that level of commitment with an obviously mentally unstable, hatchet-wielding, cat-chucking stranger from the bar. I had to explain the whole thing to my friend as he thought I was just ditching out on some nice girl who was into me. 3. I'd like to start this story off by saying that this happened when I was 21, and had recently started a relationship. As with most relationships in their early days, my boyfriend and I were not quite yet on the level of farting together on the couch or leaving the door open when we used the toilet. This all started when I felt the intense urge to use the bathroom while he and I were hanging out. We were cuddling, watching television in his room, when I accepted the fact that I would have to poop. Here. Now. I let him know I would be back in a minute, walked to the bathroom and locked the door. Let me just tell you, this thing was huge. It didn't feel like it was, but when I turned around to flush, I had a moment of worry, worry that it wouldn't go down the drain. I figured I would take a leap of faith and flush. It started off well. It sounded like any normal toilet flush should. And then the shit hit the fan. Or shall I say, it came to a screeching halt. Everything came to a stop. The poop, the toilet paper, the water, the world, panic set in. I quickly looked around for a toilet plunger. This particular bathroom did not have one, more panic. I tried flushing again once everything had settled and the water had receded a bit. The same thing happened, but the water rose to the room of the toilet, more panic, panic, panic. I decided I had to get this blockage out. I couldn't tell my boyfriend I was too nervous for us to break that intimate barrier so I decided to do what any panicked person would do, anything I could. It started with me lightly kicking the ball, praying that the tiny vibrations would be enough to shake my problem loose and send it spiraling down the drain. Nothing happened. 
I could feel my heart pounding. With this not working, I tried the next best thing. I put my arm in the bowl to try to see if I could push some toilet paper aside and see if I could see the problem. The only thing this accomplished was covering my arm past my elbow in dirty water. Panic! I realized there was one other thing I could try. He and I spent the night with each other last night, and my hairbrush was sitting next to the sink. From when I'd showered earlier that day, I looked at it, looked at the handle, and looked at the toilet. I knew what I had to try. I bent over the toilet and shoved the hairbrush down into the bowl, pushing it down until it hit the drain, where I started moving it around. I figured this was the last straw and I didn't want to have to put anything else in the bowl. So I tried as hard as I could to push away any blockage. After what felt like about five minutes, I removed the brush and threw it in the trash after a quick rinse. I scrubbed my hands over and over in the sink. Nothing was enough to remove the thought of what I just tried. Never did I think I would find myself in this situation, yet here I was. This seemed to help a bit, as some of the water went down, though not enough for me to comfortably flush. I didn't have my phone with me, but I swear I'd been in this bathroom at least 30 minutes pacing, panicking, and pushing poop around. It was at this point I accepted it. I would try a flush one more time. If that didn't work, I would have to yell to my boyfriend to grab a plunger, something I probably should have just done in the first place. This was it. The last effort. I was convinced the toilet would overflow, but my adrenaline was pumping so hard I couldn't get myself to care. So I flushed. I watched as the water rose and continued rising and rising back to the rim of the toilet. It rose just to the very tip top of the rim before I heard a noise I had been begging for. Flush. Everything went down. Everything. I nearly cried. I leaned back against the wall as I watched my world set itself back on its axis. I let out a deep sigh of relief, washed away the sins on my hands for the thirtieth time, got back into bed with my boyfriend and finally relaxed. Let me tell you, ladies, save yourself the stress and money of having to buy a new hairbrush. If you clog your new boyfriend's toilet, take that as a sign from the universe that it is time to take your relationship to the next level. Ask for a damn plunger. This actually happened a few years ago. My boyfriend from this story has now been my husband for over a year. He has since heard this story and thought it was hilarious. He also couldn't believe why I never asked for help. 4. Backstory I've already had multiple bats in my apartment, and in my life in general. So many bat situations in my life. I've already successfully caught bats in various ways, such as smacking them senseless with an empty 3-liter bottle, swinging a shoebox into the air and catching it mid-flight, and whacking it up against a wall with a pool skimmer. So I genuinely thought this was probably another bat scenario, and had a big old plastic mixing bowl in hand to capture it in. Anyway, on to the story. One Saturday morning, I heard some weird noises from behind a bookshelf I had against a corner of the living room. My cat was also wigging out about it. I thought it was probably one of those stupid talking toys that my friend brought over and maybe the battery was dying. I then proceeded to forget all about it. It is now Monday afternoon and my cat is freaking out over the same bookshelf. So I think, dumb cat, why are you still trying to get back there? But then I heard some strange rustling noises, like something is moving around behind my bookshelf. So I look around, one, two, three, okay, all the cats here, damn it. I'm going to have to move the bookshelf and see what's back there. So I toss all three cats into my bedroom, shut the door, and take the 500 books I have off the bookshelf so I can move it. That's when a huge fucking squirrel comes tearing out from behind the damn thing. A nasty razor-toothed squirrel with huge talons. It shoots over the cat tree, sprints down the hallway, and skids across the kitchen floor. Meanwhile, here I am running behind it, swinging a huge plastic mixing bowl and screaming like a lunatic. I eventually scare the thing into my bathroom and slam the door. Okay. Now what? There's a freaking squirrel in my bathroom. I can hear shit being knocked over and tossed around. 
I wonder if it crapped in fear all over my bathroom or chewed in my toothbrush. Now I'm gonna need another toothbrush. Ugh. It's probably ripping the toilet paper into shreds just for spite. Now that I have it trapped in the bathroom, I call my landlord, but sadly he's pretty useless. How to get in? Well, I went out with squirrel food and convinced it to come inside to get warm. Ugh. How the fuck would I know? In his quest to somehow blame this nonsense on me, he then asked if I had my windows open. Uh, no. It's the middle of January in Buffalo, it's 20 degrees out and snowing. What do you think, you moron? Yes, I was obviously enjoying the balmy weather so much that I not only opened my window, but also took out the screen so I could get the full effect. In the meantime, the miserable squirrel is still destroying my bathroom. I can hear it being creepy, touching everything with its little criminal hands. Oh, and on top of everything else I have to deal with today, I have to go to an overnight sleep study after working an eight-hour day. I don't have time for a visit from Foamy the Rabbit Squirrel. On the other hand, I felt kind of bad for the stupid thing. My cats have been tormenting it for days, it's been behind a bookshelf since at least Saturday morning with no food or water. And to add insult to injury, it was just chased by a terrifying human who was screaming at the top of her lungs like a banshee while swinging a plastic bowl around. Life isn't easy being a squirrel. On the same note, Life isn't easy being me, either. Thankfully, my idiotic landlord eventually called Animal Control to come and get the squirrel, who actually ended up being really cute once it was behind a cage. I found the final misdemeanor that fuzzy asshole made later, when I went to shower. It chewed up my expensive almond conditioner. Evil bastard. 5. This happened 15 years ago when I worked at a retail store, that begins with Wall as a dairy associate. I was in college at the time, and peak just no fucks given point of my life given I hated my job so much. My shift in dairy, I worked the 1pm to 10pm shift, and was all by myself from 5pm to 10pm, with no manager supervision from that point onward. Given the lack of supervision, I often just sat in the cooler watching videos on my iPod, and drinking chocolate milk and messing with shoppers by crashing carts into one another and making screaming noises when people opened the cooler doors for milk. Occasionally, I would work when I absolutely had to, as I had to prove I did some level of work to keep my job. If anyone has worked at Walmart, you know you absolutely have to take your lunch within five hours of your shift. In the event that you clock out even a minute after five hours on your shift, you will be written up. Naturally, I didn't want to get written up and just wanted to fly under the radar, so I always complied. Fast forward to the day in question. I had to move pallets of milk around in the cooler, and I managed to have everything aligned but one single 2% milk pallet. Speaking of an average pallet of milk, they usually had around 360 gallons of milk on them. So it was a bit of weight on them. They always had one single tiny piece of plastic banding holding them together, which in hindsight was pretty crazy. This is where the fuck up came into question. With this pallet of milk, I had it set up to where it would be the middle pallet between two other 2% pallets on the right and left. When I tried to move the middle pallet into spot, it hit the other two pallets. Fuck. Now I would have to move everything around again. And I had 10 minutes before I had to clock out for lunch. As a lazy person at the time, I had the bright idea that if I ran full speed with the pallet jack, I would be able to bump the other pallets out of the way and get this middle one perfectly in place. So I cleared a path and got my pallet jack center just right. I then ran full speed with the pallet jack and slammed my pallet into the two in question. Well, my plan backfired, and the middle pallet didn't budge either of the conflicting pallets even a smidge. The force in which the pallets collided caused the pallet I was pushing to collapse forward, and there was an explosion of milk. There was milk everywhere you looked, even the ceiling. I'm talking about a full-on lake of milk that spread throughout the entirety of the cooler. This would take me forever to clean up by myself. I checked my phone and saw I needed to clock out for lunch, so I had the bright idea to tell two of the store managers. Once the managers came into the cooler, they were speechless as they thought it would be a tiny spill. Surprise! 
It was double surprise when I told him I was clocking out for lunch. I figured I would let the big bucks figure it out over my minimum wage ass, so I left them on their own. At Walmart, you were never allowed overtime. So in the event you were over your hours, you had to take a longer lunch as God forbid you left early. Luckily for me, I was over that week. So I took a good two and a half hour lunch in my car, just really enjoying my ham sandwiches. When I decided to finally go back in, they had seven people cleaning and two of those floor zambonis going. They basically got the whole mess cleaned up. Me being the great employee I was, I grabbed them up and cleaned up one small area to show I was a team player. Naturally, when the work was done, I congratulated the team for all our hard work, making sure to take a bunch of credit for work I didn't do. All in all, 72 gallons of milk broke and spilled, and I did little to no work to clean up. The cooler ended up smelling of funky milk for months, as we didn't get it all. And the ceiling always had spots on it from the initial milk explosion. But little did I care, because... Fuck Walmart. Hey everybody, Hellfraser here, and thank you very much for listening to Embarrassing Stories, episode 85. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. If you enjoyed the video, then please do like and subscribe. And also tell me in the comments, if you would be so good, which movie have you seen that was a remake that you think was more enjoyable, I'm not saying better, that's a matter of opinion, but was more enjoyable to you than the original. No fighting, please. That's what I have moderators for. Not to fight, to stop the fights, even though they do fight with each other sometimes. Uh, anyway, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourselves.